Jehovah's Witnesses are known for many things, their door-to-door -door preaching work or their goofy ideas about holidays and birthdays. And one thing that they're really known for is that they don't ever ask for money. Uh, they say it themselves all of the time. We're going to talk about money. Now, the fact is uh, we never beg for money, but that's not to say we can't talk about money. As you know, for over 130 years, this organization has never solicited for funds, and it is certainly not going to start now. And when you compare that to what other Christian organizations do, uh, for instance, here's a video from the Adventists where they're actually trying to coerce children to empty their piggy banks to give it to the Adventist church. One of many ways we can display this generous spirit is through our financial donations. We are familiar with placing a contribution in the boxes labeled Contributions for the Worldwide Work at our local Kingdom Hall. Provide the needed relief aid to our dear brothers in these affected areas. What is it, sweetie? Can I give this to our brothers affected by the hurricane? Of course you can. We'll put it in the contribution box on Sunday. My piggy bank was empty. I guess I can't help. There are many things you can do to help. First, you can save some money for next time. Or like the Mormons who aren't satisfied with just people showing up to their places of worship and donating and giving money there, but they try and compel people to do it online with the credit cards and debit cards. How do we use our financial means to make friends in heaven? In many countries, we can give using a credit or some debit cards via JW.org. Now, as you can fully imagine, with Watchtower's squeaky clean past and transparency historically when it comes to how donations are used, it'll come as no surprise to anyone that a letter just went out to all elders in the U.S. branch territory detailing how Jehovah's Witnesses can take advantage of some of the more humanitarian aid that Watchtower provides. Things like financial assistance, uh, medical assistance, uh, food, housing, and and other things as well. Excuse me, I'm here from the Watchtower Charity Department and uh, I just wanted to clarify a few things. Uh, okay. Now, it seems that you mentioned uh, financial help, yeah. uh, housing yeah. help, medical, food, and others. Yeah. Uh, for those first four, mm -hmm. uh, I just wanted to clarify real briefly, um, we don't. What do you mean you don't? Like you don't do anything at all? No, yes, uh, we, we, we don't uh, do any sort of thing like that. Um, now, when you talk about others, uh, could you uh, expound upon that? I mean, I assume that would be like transportation costs, uh, maybe if someone needs help with a funeral or costs, things like that. Would that include spiritual assistance at all? I mean, that's not really a tangible thing. So no, I suppose. Oh, okay, then we'll have to strike that from the record as well. So yeah, uh, just for clarity's sake, uh, yeah, we don't do any of that. But what do you guys hey, do? I'm sorry, that's about all the time I have today. Uh, bye! I swear, you can't make this stuff up. Hi, it's Editing Wally here, and I ended up making this video twice, and in the uh, second attempt, I realized that I never actually described exactly what this document is. What it is is a resource that Jehovah's Witness elders can point ordinary members to in order to get uh, assistance from various charities or government institutions. And in all of the links that are available in this document, not one of them is anything Watchtower related. So that is essentially what this document is. Now, back to your regularly scheduled program. Hello and welcome to the JW Thoughts channel. My name is Wally and today, if you've been following the channel for a while, you're probably thinking, 
is this guy ever going to stop talking about them and donations? And if you're uh, new to the channel, then, uh, well, welcome. Don't forget to drop a like on the video and subscribe for future content like this. But uh, all of the videos that I've been m making uh, over the past couple weeks about how them collecting donations, how they're not really a charity, this has all been leading up to this moment right here. Because one thing that we haven't really ever discussed is what do the Jehovah's Witness leaders actually tell their, their members whenever someone needs help? What is the actual process? And I think that this was a perfect example of how they just try and farm it out to other people. Now, I do find it amazing how in the um, sort of intro to this letter, it very specifically says, uh, for various reasons, I can't show it on screen, but uh, it very specifically says to direct them towards government and uh, non-profit organizations. So government and non-profit organizations go to Satan's system, uh, essentially, which is baffling to me. You know, you, you have this sort of ecosystem of Jehovah's Witnesses, you know, and they think it's this spiritual paradise and there's all this abundance and there's all this brotherly love and we take care of each other. And yet the second someone needs real world help, not Hey, think about the invisible thing that lives in the sky. Hey, think about that fantasy for the future. When someone needs boots on the ground help, this is exactly what happens. They say, well, time to turn to Satan. We haven't been able to work it out. Apparently, Jehovah doesn't provide for his people. And Satan has to come in and make up for this specific deficiency. And I just... I find it so cuckoo that Jehovah's Witnesses don't actually ask themselves this question. And when I say Jehovah's Witnesses don't ask, I mean the hardcore believers, because as we're seeing more and more, people are leaving the organization because of things just like this. Uh, I can't tell you how many people that I've talked to have said they left the organization directly after they were refused or denied help by the organization in any way. And, and it's insane, too, right? Because for some of these people, they have been in the organization for decades, giving $100, $200 every single month to Watchtower. They helped build their Kingdom Hall. They helped maintain it. You know, they paid off the loan for the Kingdom Hall, and then Watchtower sold it and didn't give them anything and told them to go and drive for an hour farther. And now, when they are in their time of need, whenever they are desperate, Watchtower says, ha, ah, Satan's system will take care of you. Sorry, we, we don't really have any programs for that. It's so sad. And it is waking people up, but in a really sad way, because you know it would be optimal if people would you know, wake up from their indoctrination because of logic and reason and have good reasons to be like, no, this isn't the truth. But sometimes it does take that for people to start asking the right questions. But I kind of digress here. Well, you see, when I get bored, I make up my own movie. I have a very short attention span. But our point is very simple. You see when- Oh, look, a bird! <laughs> now take a look at this clip from Samuel Hurd because I think it really highlights the duplicity, the, the paradox that is the governing body. Due to the economy in the past few years, many of our brothers were out of work for a period of time. The governing body is aware that many of you generously provided food and even money so that their families could get by. We commend you for your generosity. In fact, that is exactly what Jehovah wanted you to do. So he acknowledges that the governing body is aware that people in the organization were having problems. And he's not saying, hey, here's what we did. He's commending other members that stepped in and helped out. And then he says this curious part, because that's what Jehovah wanted you to do. Well, if that's what Jehovah wanted them to do, doesn't it follow that that's what he wants the organization to do as well? It's almost like they're indicting themselves here. If Jehovah wants them to be charitable and they're not, doesn't that just flat out mean that they are not following Jehovah's direction? It's almost like an admission of guilt. Hey, 
you guys, you did a good job. That's what Jehovah wanted to do. I mean, we wouldn't do that, but boy, howdy, I got to hand it to you. Feels good. Now, the why to this is probably the most difficult thing to answer because I think it's a pretty dynamic question. Why are they collecting all of this money? And to be honest, it's like the biggest scam ever. It's like NFTs on crack. Uh -huh. They are selling people nothing. They are selling people air, snake oil, essentially, because what they're giving back to people, well, we give back in spiritual education. You know, we give people a hope for the future. We give them comfort. You don't give them a real hope for the future. You give them a fantasy. You don't give them comfort. You teach them how to repress their thoughts and never actually deal with their, their emotions in a healthy, appropriate way. You don't give them spiritual comfort or, or spiritual healing or spiritual food. You've butchered up the Bible and copy pasted like the, the Riddler, you know, from a Batman movie and put together this weird, crazy sort of doctrine that makes absolutely no sense to rational people. And you sell that as truth. And after all of the false prophecies and all of the false promises and all of the disappointments and generations of people coming and going, waiting for these promises to be fu fulfilled, I feel we are getting closer and closer towards the, the waning, the winding down of Watchtower. Because if there's one thing that is very consistent in the world, it's that you can't sell people on nothing forever. At some point, they're going to catch on and NFTs are going to collapse. You know, it's a fiat currency that they're dealing with, and it's only sustainable for so long. Now, someone might be saying, well, Wally, you, you silly goofball. Religion has been around forever. Well, isn't that what you're talking about? Well, one thing that makes other religions so distinctly different than Jehovah's Witnesses is they actually do help people, whether that's building schools hospitals, you know, providing financial assistance, housing assistance, you know, medical assistance. You know, that is a core foundation of most of the big churches and, you know, th building that community uh, around helping other people is so important. But Jehovah's Witnesses haven't built a community on helping other people. It's only on helping Watchtower. And that's why I think we're in the final phases of the Watchtower organization. I might be completely wrong, and this take might just age like milk, but, you know, I guess we'll just have to see exactly where it goes. But hey, comment down below what you think the future of Watchtower is going to be, and uh, maybe uh, comment down below if you think that in 2023 they're going to make the same mistake that they did in 2022 and actually tell people how much they spent on humanitarian aid. With all that being said, if you're still around, don't forget to drop a like on the video and subscribe to the channel. And I will see you next time.